Hi everybody. Today I want to talk about fonts. What makes a good font choice? How do you find a good font? Downloading and converting fonts, including fonts and a block theme. And I want to chat about the future of the Web Fonts API. Let's dive in. There are a variety of free font providers. We're going to focus on providers that offer fonts with GPL compatible licensing. This is critical if you're planning on submitting your block theme to the WordPress public repository. Some popular free font providers which offer open font licenses include Behance, Dribble, Defonts, Fonts.com, Bunny Fonts, and Google Fonts. Google Fonts is seemingly the most popular resource and we'll be focusing on using a font from this provider today. Choosing the right font can be a challenging task. Here are a few things to consider. Focus on the typeface's design to distinguish its legibility. Steer clear of unconventional letter forms that have unique shapes, deformations, or excessive ornamentation. Look for clear forms in the lower E and C shapes and compare across different weights or widths. Experiment with setting your typeface to verify its readability. Good readability exemplifies communication over style. Some fonts are more suitable for large headlines, while others are best for small body copy. Test different line heights and letter spacing. Our eyes are easily distracted by large rivers of white space flowing between words and lines, which can degrade readability. Another consideration while choosing a font is aesthetics and mood. Consider writing down a few words that describe a typeface and then compare them to the objectives for your design. Similarly, examine what mood the typeface conveys. Ask colleagues for feedback and verify whether it is adequate for the message. Once you've made a decision on which typeface to use, it is worth considering what exact weights you will need. Each font loaded will create additional requests and slow down your user's access to the final content and experience. So be critical of exactly which weights you need and consider letting the browser infer italics if necessary. It is also important to be familiar with the benefits of variable fonts, which are a newer font format that can incorporate multiple weights and widths into a single file and potentially minimize the overall file size. However, this is not always the case and it is important to audit the final file sizes to ensure that you're using the best format. In our example, we will be using the font fig tree from Google fonts. I'm going to download the entire family of fonts and expand the zip file on my local hard drive. Once expanded, we can see that there are both a variable font option and a static font option with unique files per weight. Our theme design will require only two weights of the fig tree font, regular 400 and semi bold 600. With this in mind, we can now proceed with the next step. Converting. Before we dive into converting our font, let's discuss what format we will want our final web font to be. It is common for font providers to package their downloaded fonts in true type format or TTF. However, the web open font format WOFF offers a better, more optimized file size for end users and has excellent browser compatibility. WOFF2 supersedes WOFF because it provides better compression, which results in smaller file sizes. We can take the font file from Google Fonts and use a free online tool like cloudconvert.com to convert the TTF file to WOFF2. I'm going to start by selecting the regular and semi-bold weights. I'm also going to choose the variable font format so we can compare the final file size and see 
which one offers the faster experience. As we can see, the file size of the two static font files for regular and semi-bold are larger than the single variable file in this instance. So we will use the variable file and save our end users approximately six kilobytes. Now that we have downloaded and converted our fonts to the appropriate format, we will need to add them to a block theme. The three main steps will be create a basic block theme with the create block theme plugin, add our fonts into the theme structure and register and use our fonts in the block themes theme.json. For the purposes of this tutorial, we will only need a simple block theme to jumpstart our theme development process. The Create Block Theme plugin is the perfect tool for this because it allows us to generate a simple bare bones theme. I already have a local WordPress development instance on my computer, which I created using WP Engine's Local. This tool allows you to quickly create a testing WordPress environment to safely experiment when developing new themes and features. From within my WordPress local instance, I will search, install, and activate the Create Block Theme plugin. Once it is activated, I will visit the newly created Create Block Theme menu item to generate a new blank block theme. The theme name field is the only required field. I'll give my theme a name and click the Create Theme button to generate it. This new theme is automatically created in my local WordPress installs theme directory. Before I open the theme in my code editor, I need to activate the newly created theme. As you can see, the theme that the Create Block Theme plugin generates is modest and has very little styling applied to it. This is great because we'll want to customize it and make it our own. Earlier, we converted our fonts and saved them on our local hard drive. However, it is necessary to move them into our new theme. I recommend placing fonts in the following directory structure within your theme. Now, I'll place the font file within this newly created directory. Now that our fonts have been relocated within our theme, we will need to register the fonts within our theme's theme.json file. The theme.json file is a critical part of a block theme and allows builders to enable and disable certain features, style blocks and global elements, and even assign template parts. This is where we'll register our fonts within the settings.typography object. A lot of these properties represent CSS properties that are mapped to JSON keys. One of the primary things to note in the code is the source key points to our font file's location. The complete code can be seen on our builder site, which I will link to in the show notes. Previously, we had registered our fonts within the theme.json file. However, to tell our theme that we want to use the font, we will need to assign it to either a block or an element. Since we want to use Figtree throughout the entire page, we will assign the font to the HTML body element by targeting the styles.typography key in the theme.json. We can refresh our home page and see the new fig tree font in action. We can inspect our code and highlight the body element to see that our CSS variable is assigned the proper value. We can also inspect the custom variable and the computed styles of the element to verify that our fig tree font is being used. Congratulations, you've hooked up a custom font in your block theme. I encourage you to explore the theme.json file and all its capabilities. Before we wrap up, let's talk about the future of the Web Fonts API. 
What I've demonstrated today encompasses the first phase of the WebFonts API. The next phase will extend the work and aims to cover features like create a font library within the WordPress admin dashboard for users to manage fonts, enhance caching and registration mechanisms for themes and plugins to dynamically initiate and queue fonts. The roadmap is publicly available and I encourage you to check it out. I'll post a link in the show notes. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And as usual, please like and subscribe down below. Thanks.